Hello everyone, this is Ellis and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm sharing with you today, we will be exploring the California Wolf Center located in Chilean. Join us on a fascinating adventure and learn about wolf conservation and observe these magnificent creatures in their natural habitat. So let's go guys and enjoy the world of wolves and discover the beauty of these fascinating animals. See you there! Today we are going to have a howling experience. We'll see the wolves. Hello everyone, this is Ellis and we just arrived here at California Wolf Center. We're just waiting for our tour guide to come and bring us in. So see you guys. Okay guys, our tour guide came in and we're going to follow her to the wolf. Oh, this is the 10 miles away. Uh, 10 miles away.
Yeah, um, and their mates are, on, or Yana's mate is on exhibit with uh, Mom's sister. Mm. Oh, it's okay. Cool. Yeah, so these guys are the Northwestern Grey Wolves. So they are not invaded in the US. Um, so that means. They have a much lower life expectancy of about five to seven years. Yeah. So there's a few reasons for that huge difference. Uh, one reason is that um, our wolves here get veterinary care. So they get vaccines for anything that your dog might get, parvo, distemper, rabies, anything like that. Wolves in the wild don't get that, so they have that threat to deal with. Uh, another reason or the, the rattlesnakes, are they susceptible to rattlesnakes? Mm. Uh, toxin, uh... Yeah, great question. Uh, so these guys are actually partially immune to rattlesnake venom. Oh, really? So mm. we have had wolves get bitten by rattlesnakes before. There was one who, for some reason, are hunting that live ungulate prey, which mm. have those horns and antlers and hooves. Mm -hmm. These guys don't have that. And in the wild, if a wolf gets kicked in the head by one of those, they might die. Here, they don't have that threat. Uh, and then the third reason is humans. In the wild, uh, wolves don't always get along with humans. Um, people are scared of them. You shouldn't be. They're pretty calm and they'll stay away from you. Um, and sometimes they will also get hit by cars, unfortunately. So they can it bit her in the face. And her face all swelled up, kind of like a bee sting. And we called her a vet and we were like, hey, she got bitten by a rattlesnake. Uh, do we need like anti-venom? Like, what's the deal? And our vet was like, no, nah, she'll be fine. We'll just give her some antibiotics, make sure it doesn't get infected. But as long as it doesn't get infected, she should be good. Uh, and sure enough, she was totally fine. But she did not learn her lesson. <laughs> so next time she found a snake, she decided, ah, oh, this time I'm going to sit on it. Oh. And she got bitten in the butt. And the same thing happened, it swelled up a rattlesnake. Uh, but she decided to pick it up and chase her sister around with it. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> How are they to dogs? I mean, I know that they yeah. kind of look like dogs. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and dogs were domesticated thousands and thousands of years ago. Uh, so that means that we have selectively bred dogs to be very friendly to humans and basically kind of act like a puppy their entire lives. Uh, so they are related to dogs, but there have been thousands of years of breeding, keeping them kind of apart genetically. Because your white one looks like our white shepherd. <laughs> identical to her. She's like, the legs look like a yeah, dog. Yeah, there are some <laughs> dog breeds that have been bred to have more wolf-like features. So these guys are either born here at our center or they are transferred from another center. Into California uh, with an individual called OR7, also known as Journey. Uh, OR7 stands for Oregon 7. Uh, and he was from Oregon and he made his way down into California and he was the first wolf in California in about... Okay, we'll give them a nice little separate area where they don't have to be on tour. Uh, how do you know they're not being so much? Uh, it's just like not showing up, not wanting to be around all the people, pretty much. Whereas, you know, you saw Poppy and Yana come right down and they were like, okay, <laughs> interesting new things. Yeah, they're, they're like a star. Yeah, we do like to call Poppy our full yeah. star. <laughs> No, I don't say anything. Yes, yeah, so uh, Wintu, I can't remember his age off the top of my head, uh, but Felicia is the same age as Poppy. Mm -hmm. oh. But Wintu is the dad, so he would be. Yeah, because he looks a lot bigger. Mm. Yeah, um, so, gray wolf. Uh, so these guys are definitely pretty big for a wolf. Mm. And litter, how many puppies? Yeah, so a litter can range from one to about ten individuals, um, but average is four or five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
or anything that they might not normally get. We also give scent enrichment, so that sometimes includes urine or fun fruit teas or things like that. <laughs> so yeah, you might have like elk urine, red fox urine. urine. Yep. And they don't drink it, but they do like smelling it. Uh, and it just gives them that extra sensory experience that they're not necessarily going to get all the time because they are in captivity. So you're in from another world? Where um, you, how would you get that? Oh. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> No, wow. You get red wolf urine, elk urine, things like that off You're Amazon. Me. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that our interns could observe natural wolf behavior without the wolves necessarily knowing they're there. But our wolves are very smart, so they <laughs> figured out, ah, oh, there's people up there. I'm not going to behave like I would naturally. Oh. So now we just put our trail cams up there. <laughs> yeah, they figured it out. Huh? Yeah, they are very smart. <laughs> That's why they also do come down all this way, even though uh, they know that people are here and they are afraid of people. It's because they know we stay on the other side of this fence. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, yeah. if they're going to stay over there and stay out of my territory, that's okay. I'll come down and say hi. <laughs> oh, and she's hunting flies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have any more questions about the We're going to wait for everybody else to go and then we'll go ahead. And we'll go with it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Where's the world? Yeah. Keep your mouth shut. Okay, we are going to the next one. To the next one. Um, also with the Northwestern Grays, they are adapted to living in places where it can get very cold, so they have small ears so that they're not letting off too much heat from their ears, helping with that thermoregulation. And they also have big paws that act kind of like snowshoes. These guys are native to areas uh, in the southwestern U.S. and down into Mexico. So they live in areas where it can get a lot hotter. So they have adaptations for that arid climate. Uh, so they have much bigger ears, kind of like a jackrabbit has big ears, to let off that heat and again thermoregulate. Uh, and then they also have much smaller paws so that they aren't picking up heat from the ground. Uh, these guys also have a much lower variation in coat color, so they're all going to look kind of the same color, uh, and that's because their population dropped down to 13 because of anti-predator campaigns, so their gene pool became more of a gene cuddle. But I'll definitely get into more details of that with them, and we'll head over to our next habitat. Down to what's 
Uh, there are also a couple other differences with coyotes. Uh, one is coyotes have a more pointy, narrow muzzle uh, and snout, uh, and they also have pointier ears. And that pointy, whereas these guys have a boxier snout and their ears are a little more round. Uh, but that snout difference is because coyotes are hunting prey that might be digging into burrows. So they get to stick their nose down in that burrow to try and get them. Whereas these guys are hunting that large ungulate prey, so they don't.
Okay guys, we are heading back. This is the end of the tour, so we are going back home. Here's the trail, going to the parking lot. Hello everyone, this is the end of the tour, so we're heading back home. It was a fun field day again, reuniting with nature and the wolves.
night with nature.
Okay guys, I went to get two apple pies to take home. There you go. Okay guys, we're stopping here for apple pie. Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like our howling adventure today. If you haven't subscribed, like and share, please do it now. Again, thank you very much. Love you all and God bless. See you on my next one.